Now these garage deliveries, as you can see, uh, load a little bit choppy for me. I cut past the choppiness in the rest of them for your viewer experience. Your mileage will vary there, I'm sure. The rest of these scenarios, I believe, are essentially an unlimited mode. I guess I could play it longer to see if there's an ending, but I don't believe there is. It's just a bunch of procedurally generated delivery jobs, which is pretty fun. It's maybe a little bit simple since it doesn't matter if you damage the car. And there's no police, so you're, you're just trying to time attack through traffic, basically. And that's if you just want to make it more exciting. You don't have to get there fast. In fact, you can drive this more as a simulator, uh, obey traffic stops and all that. But I mean... If you're watching this on YouTube, you probably want some excitement, right? Granted, I'll probably do a nice, just, obey the laws kind of video on East Coast to see how the new traffic light system works in the update. Just some casual, calming, highway weaving. This is another set of scenarios where you can't restart. You can crash, just don't accidentally total your car or you do have to abandon the delivery. And it is kind of funny later when I completely smash the car all up in there, like, yeah, I'll take this delivery. Uh, if you've noticed, they've improved the navigational error system a good amount, as now you have horizontal arrows that spawn above ground, so you can actually see when a sharp turn's coming up. That way you don't overshoot, especially if there's any kind of crests nearby. Also, this was the, the first of these missions I completed, so I thought I could just park in the square and not care about the parking space, but no. <laughs> You want to park in that space. There you go. I do think these are a little bit more fun when they spawn you in a faster vehicle. Of course, uh, they let me deliver a police car, so I had to play around with the siren to see if it made it easier. It did not. It just made everyone stop in the way. It would be nice if they uh, improved the AI logic with police lights, police sirens, because obviously the, the goal is pull over out of their way, not just stop in the middle of the road. boss is quite fast though. So despite this being a, a decently long distance to drive, it'll be a lot quicker. It's also super easy to drive around traffic on these highways because of the giant car width shoulder. You just gotta make sure you pay attention because every once in a while a 
AI traffic car might cheat into the shoulder just a bit on a turn. Also, obviously, don't want to miss your exit. Yeah, I did actually leave ESC on for once. Half the time, I just disable it. Got a little bit squirrely there. Yeah, the arrow, um, a little bit confused there, kind of telling you to drive into a bench. If anyone's played, uh, Test Drive Unlimited, this kind of reminds me of that. Except for the fact that there's no, uh, damage indicator or anything of the sort. Let's sneak through the gap there. Let's as you do with the little piccolino. Almost clipped that curve in an awkward. Not gonna lie, I kinda wanna see someone do a mod where they make a crazy taxi in Bimichi. Like, we have all the right objective systems in the game. You get points for jumping. I mean, obviously. Don't know if the game has a way to rate you based on near missing yet. As these ran on a little bit longer, I started being a little more reckless, so. If you liked seeing the car being delivered without a scratch, that's not going to happen in these next two. Already off to a good start. <laughs> Just get some tall grass wedged in the, the radiator, it's fine. It's fine. driving does get a little bit more stale when you're in less speedy of a vehicle. Oh, there you go. There's one of the cars cheating into the shoulder a little bit. But for the most part, just stay in the shoulder and you'll be fine. Yes, let me know if you like these long-form scenario showcases with or without commentary. I do know from personal experience it can be a little more engaging to watch these with someone giving their thoughts on what's happening and why they did what they did during the event. Yeah, that's a... Just, that'll buff out. Just read that one just a little bit. I can't remember how far the distance was for the longest delivery missions in... Oh yeah, there... <laughs> that was a misread. 
If I hadn't slowed down, I probably would have made that. Yeah, I wonder what the longest distance delivery in Test Drive Unlimited was. I thought it was something like 20 miles, like basically from one side of Hawaii to the next. So this is still shorter comparatively. I did record this yesterday, so I don't remember when I crash, just that I do. <laughs> Builds up the suspense. Will he or won't he crash around this next corner? gets even worse in the next delivery. Like, I think I just straight up oncoming smack one of the cars. These roads are so nice to cruise around. Kind of makes me a little bit sad that we don't have nearly as many of these sorts of roads on West Coast. I don't know how I've managed to keep my side mirrors unscathed. Grinding the side of the car against two others was the crash, remember? But there's still time. And it looks like I managed to stay mostly unscathed on this one. Just some paint trading. So it is reasonably fitting that my largest crash has happened in the Turbo Burger car. Right at the start, too. Right at the start, I already have a pretty good ding to the side. like people sleep on the modern Pessima, but it's a pretty great handling front-wheel drive car, actually. Especially the sport models. Yeah, breaking the radiator this early into the delivery, maybe not optimal. wasn't fully damaged yet, it probably is now. It's not like you need to see where you're going. Of course, they also have the most narrow roads. 
forcing me to slow down and let the radiator have more time to fail. Also, that guy is, um, grievously injured. We'll, we'll ignore that. As the radiator is leaking coolant fluid, your first objective should be going as fast as possible, and then once it's leaked too much, then you just have to make sure you don't overheat the car too quickly. At this point, we start coasting with the engine off just to preserve it so I actually finish the delivery. When the only thing that matters is getting there at all, that, that becomes the primary objective, just preserve that engine that I completely demolished. a little bit of road rash on that curb. Actually, that would be cool if you could get like curb rash on tires. I'm sure that's not part of the uh, PBR materials. And there we go again. Yeah, uh, here's your car, sir. <laughs> 